Welcome everyone to The Honest Review. Today we're gonna to be talking about all-in-one liquid cooling solutions for your CPUs and whether or not you're building your first rig or upgrading your PC, I hope this video helps you along the way. And if it does, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Keeping your CPU ice cold helps prolong the lifespan of your CPU and helps you overclock to higher speeds safely to get the most out of your rig. So as quickly as possible, I wanted to make this video covering why you don't buy super cheap knockoff off-brand CPU coolers and also cover the topic of whether or not you need an upgraded CPU cooling solution for your PC. We're going to look at basic performance and pricing from a gang of all-in-one coolers. Okay, first off, my $35 baseline Asetek 120 millimeter AIO that came with my CyberPower pre-build is a savage for the price. It kept my GPU at 66 to 72 degrees Celsius, even when overclocked. I always ran a dual fan exhaust setup on this radiator to maximize the airflow, and she always excelled. I eventually upgraded my AIO and used an NZXT G12 mod kit for my RTX 2070, and liquid cooled my GPU with this little 120 millimeter AIO, and it still keeps my RTX 2070 ice cold to this day. I upgraded to the NZXT 280 millimeter AIO for my i9-9900K, and this AIO, even after a year and a half, kept my i9 at 66 degrees Celsius, even when overclocked. It's just a stallion. I did migrate to a dual PC setup for my streaming and I moved that NZXD 280 into my stream PC, replacing the stock fan that came with my i5. And then I put a big boy Corsair H150i 360mm RGB Pro into my main PC. I saw immediate temperature improvements from that NZXT which was sitting at about 66 degrees Celsius to a new low average of 55 degrees Celsius with the Corsair 360 millimeter, which has been an even better stallion. My AIO liquid cooling adventure wasn't over though. I tested two off-brand Rajin Tech 360 millimeter AIOs. The Orcus 360, which surprised me at a 58 to 62 degrees Celsius average. And the EOS 360 millimeter sadly failed me at ridiculous temperatures, 95 degrees Celsius, upwards of 112 degrees Celsius. This just caused my computer to crash during stress testing. Before any of you ask in the comments section, every single AIO I've installed, I remove the stock thermal paste and apply Arctic MX4 thermal paste. I make sure I have a solid contact to the CPU and double check all my connections. The EOS's pump appeared to have failed because when I had this hooked up and running and stress testing on my PC, you can typically feel a pump's activity just to the touch and I wasn't feeling anything happening here or at the top of the rig where this cable connects to SATA power. I wasn't feeling activity in either of those pumps. I'm sure this EOS would have performed pretty decently. I've seen some other reviews on this product, but sadly this one was faulty in my experience. There were some subtle but very important differences when we go from the name brand coolers to the off brand coolers. Firstly, these don't appear to be built with Asetek pumps. That's actually a big deal. We'll talk about why in a second, but we see really different pump designs like this one right here on the actual cooling line. And then on this EOS, we actually see a SATA powered pump right here on the radiator. So definitely different from what we're used to seeing. So a quick rundown on why the Asetek pump design is so important in your all-in-one cooler would be that Asetek actually owns the patent for the pump design that mounts right to the CPU. And that's why all of your most reputable name brand CPU cooler manufacturers use Asetek pumps, whether or not it's Cooler Master, Thermaltake, NZXT, Corsair, all these guys, they pay Asetek to use their pumps because they're simply the best. They perform the best. That's also why my little $35 Asetek cooler that came with my CyberPower pre-build doesn't get made anymore because it's so cheap. It's made by Asetek. It performs so well. I was cooling an i9-9900K overclocked and maintaining awesome temperatures. And that specific cooler competes so directly with all of your mainstream, uh, like 50, $60, 120 millimeter AIO cooler. So Asetek doesn't even sell that on Amazon anymore. Now, the second thing I wanted to note about these Rogentech CPU coolers and it's not the biggest deal, but it can make a slight difference in performance, is that one of the coolers did follow that four corner mounting 
for the actual CPU cooler and the plate, the cold plate that hits that CPU, these mounting screws just press that tightly onto the CPU and having those four corners, those points of pressure, can be really important. Now I can't say that that's a deal breaker because the Orcus actually performed really well for us and it actually only has two points of fastening or the applying of pressure for this cold plate right here to the CPU. It's just a top and bottom and it performed really well. So at the end of the day, here's my opinion when it comes to cooling solutions for your CPUs. If you know you want your PC to be super quiet, you want to overclock, you're gonna be possibly gaming and streaming at the same time, or you're gonna be doing some video editing, anything that can put some heavy work class loads onto that PC, I highly advise getting an advanced cooling solution for your CPU. Whether or not it's a custom water cooling loop, an all-in-one liquid cooler, or an air cooler, Anything that's going to provide better cooling solutions for that CPU, allow you to overclock and get more performance out of your PC safely, is definitely the best way to go if you're going to be working with heavy workloads and you want your PC to be super quiet. If you're not going to be gaming and streaming at the same time, overclocking, doing video editing, anything that's heavy workloads, then you don't necessarily need to break the bank and get some big AIO or even a small AIO. The stock fan solution will work just fine for you, even if you're just gaming. If you don't care about a little bit of extra noise in your chassis and it just running a little bit hotter, this is gonna work fine, no problem. For those of you questioning whether or not you should go 360, 280 or 120 millimeter AIOs, I would tell you now that they perform very similarly and the little 50, $60, 120 millimeter AIOs perform really well. So if it's not the biggest deal and you wanna save some money, uh, you could definitely go with a 120 or even a 280 and not pay that higher cost for the 360 millimeter AIOs. I hope that my CPU cooling adventure has helped you in your decision making process. And if it has, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the content, greatly appreciated. Notification squad, you guys rock. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace.